Thank you for staying with us, and I promise you, you would enjoy today's episode, like I believe you've enjoyed every other episode. We go straight into the meat of the matter, or meats, as the case may be. Now, menopause is one point in the continuum of life stages of women that marks the end of their reproductive years. Now, after menopause, a woman cannot become pregnant, except in rare cases when specialized fertility treatments are used. Most women experience menopause between, well, according to statistics, the ages of 45 and 55 years as a natural part of biological aging. But many are not aware, and do get this, that men too experience some form of menopause, which in their case is termed, like I said, not womenopause, menopause, but andropause. Now, our correspondent Bettina Unwili in this particular report helps us understand the term menopause and or terms menopause and andropause, which of course many people are not actually aware of. Do watch this. Andropause is a natural process that occurs in men as they age. This happens when hormone levels, in particular testosterone, decline with time. Some men experience symptoms when their testosterone levels fall below a critical point. This level differs for each individual, so it is important to watch for behavioral changes and physical symptoms. We want to really tell people to expect it because it's manifesting in various ways. You have every man undergoes male menopause unless you die before 40 or 50 or 60. For women, aging is associated with mood swings and hot flashes, but do men go through similar hormonal changes? Yes, men go through low sex drive, fatigue, reduced muscle mass, irritability and mood swings, erectile dysfunction and depression. It is important to note that andropause is not the male equivalent to female menopause. Not only do men not lose the ability to reproduce completely, not all men experience it. Like childbearing, people experience menopause differently. I just woke up one day and I found something rolling in my stomach and I was like, God, what is this again? I was curious. But my son screamed and said, no, mommy, you have to go to the hospital. And I noticed that any time I eat anything too heavy, I will start having pain in my abdomen. And the first thing that came to my mind was exercise and change my diet. And I put myself on some antibiotics. Please don't follow after what I did because it's really wrong, but God helped me. So I, I put myself on the antibiotics and um, I started exercising. I will work for one hour every day. Then I changed my diet. I started feeding on fluids and liquids. And within two weeks, I lost so much weight. A lot of the shame around menopause is caused by negative attitudes towards women. Their objectification means when they are older and no longer fertile, they are seen as less valuable and are instead washed up. For the men, it seems almost unfathomable that anything remotely close to menopause can be their lot. It's for ladies. Um, I don't know about men. I don't know about, I don't think so. I don't know about men. Ah, no, I don't know that one. You, know you will certainly undergo this aging process of life and um, we really want to counsel men to be aware of it because he had a lot of uh, drawback problems in marriages, in homes. Therefore, the more aware they are, the more they're equipped to tackle the little problem. Now I'm scared. Menopause and andropause should not be seen as the end for men or women. Both parties should be just as respected as they were before any uncontrollable biological changes. Bettina Mwili, reporting for News Central. Well, that was a very uh, interesting report put together by Bettina. It was quite shocking to see the guy who said, nah, I'm scared. Well, now nah, I'm scared too, to be honest. I'm, 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 I'm honestly, honestly scared. I know, right? Now, <laughs> yeah, there's, uh, something, there's something that uh, most African mothers always say, mm. especially the, the women from the Yoruba-speaking part of, Af of Nigeria mm -hmm. in Africa. The Yoruba girls would understand this. They say something about um, women, women easily get into their nights quicker. Mm. There's a way they say it in Yoruba. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, growing up as, a, as, a, as an African girl, you think, um, you know, I don't have a lot of time on my hands. Mm. But apparently, not every man has all the time in the world. And I don't 
don't know if to say back at you, but <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, this is quite, this is really something that we should learn about because not everybody knows about it. Not everybody's informed to this level. So yes, I'm yes, glad yes. that this is coming up. Definitely. Well, joining us now to discuss this is the Assistant Secretary, the Association of Community Pharmacists, Lagos State, Musumola Dusumu, and Family Medicine Consultant, Dr. Dumebi Okafo. Thank you so much for joining us. Let me be sure that I have um, Dr. Dumebi. Are you there with us? No, that's Dr. Okafo. Dr. Dumebi is on screen with us. Um, we, we cannot yeah, hear you. I'm here. Okay, okay, yes, we can hear you. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Dr. Yeah. Musumola, so okay, All right, unfortunately, we don't have her yet, but she, she's going us. to join us. Uh, right. But let me uh, come straight to you, Dr. Okafo. We know that most people have an idea of what menopause is all about. Could you help us understand what andropos is? Could you give a vivid um, insight, uh, a description of, of what andropos is? intro as the uh, well, your reporter that was quite fast um, especially it was it was quite sufficient and quite um, you know uh, a picture. it was quite a picture I'll just present it was good enough but the I think I think mention I'll come to that uh, to your question same thing applies as in women and um, you know, the call men in a um, in, uh, circulatory uh, level of concentration of the male uh, sex to more test. So, with the loss of that hormone, which of course gives you at puberty all your male secondary characteristics, your husky voice, the, um, the hair patterns, including the face and, and the head, and all that, with the loss of that, uh, important physiological changes. Biological changes of occur in the man as to do in the woman. So it's basically really the same. Uh, but the important difference, like I said, I'll get to later. Um, it is the purpose of this program, I'm sure, to highlight an incredibly important thing. Um, we're doing some studies on that, on that now, actually, in a different direction, but the same, same kind of context. Uh, of what what the man goes through biologically uh, in midlife, uh, the female one is as old as time, you know, as old as the human story, uh, be that menopause. But very little is known, not to the not to medicine. Medicine we are very aware of this, where we call it hypogonadism in men. Uh, but it's important to bring it out to uh, the lay population that this phenomenon, as a health issue, as a public health phenomenon. Is something one should be aware of. We all should be aware of. I'm taking you get to uh, to look at, and if possible, deal with. Um, it's simply the cessation of the usual levels of the male uh, sex hormone testosterone, testosterone, and all the you know changes. Yes, changes that it brings to the body eventually. Okay, Doctor Kafo, very quickly now. Um... Clearly, I have been very, very well um, educated and schooled, not just by you, but also by that report, and also a little bit frightened, which I'm sure almost, uh, I'm sure a lot of men who, who are watching this show right now are also frightened, like that gentleman in the report said, he said, now I'm scared. But then, of course, one thing that we can do to allay fears is education and enlightenment. So before we come to the media, um, you know, what's, what, what's being done by medical bodies, you know, to create more awareness concerning andropos, particularly in Africa, are, are we getting enough um, you know, are people, are patients, are men getting enough information from, uh, you know, from the medical angle? In your opinion, by the way. Uh, you, you, you know, we've had, you know, we had the signal. You know, I'm never quite happy with all of our level of uh, information, both of the public health sphere and the, you know, clinical work. Medical practice is concerned. I, for one, have always, 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 you know, interrogated inter my patients, uh, even when they come for routine health checks, about the likelihood of this starting with the, uh, the, the you know, the, 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 
primary and a rare function. Um, and so it's important to emphasize that, like everything else, hypogonadism has been with us, has been a clear part of medical health delivery, uh, but it is not so well, like a lot of things. Yes, even hypertension, simple hypertension, the, the proper care, the risk involved, nobody seems to know about it. So it behoves the medical pra uh, the practitioners, the medical profession, it behoves the public health custodians to ensure that people get to know more and more how uh, more of the net and make it have some uh, productivity of the individual, which is extremely important to the society as well. So these are important health issues. And I want to say again, it is there's nothing scary about it. Not just scary about it. You know, these issues can be remedied. It is about going to see your doctor when you have any of the abuse symptoms, which was well listed out in the um, young ladies' uh, 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 journalistic report. And taking it from the doctor is the is not capable of handling sending you there is always almost always a solution, treatment solution. And sometimes, as in this case, simply just being advised. So you had the distress in your just losing weight and doing things that science makes a lot of right. Um, if we have to write that can be wonderful. Oh, which, of course, clear medical guidance. All right. Thank you, um, Dr. Okafor. Sorry. Unfortunately, there seems to be a bit of fluctuation in the net network, and we hope that it gets better as we proceed. But in the meantime, we have with us uh, Musumola Dosumu, the Assistant Secretary, Association of Community Pharmacists, Lagos State. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. All right, my pleasure. Uh, Dr. Okafor, we'll come back to you, but let me ask uh, Musumola this question. Now, we see in both menopause and andropause, there seems to be uh, a lot of discomfort. For men, for example, you see uh, depression, lots of sweating, erectile dis dysfunction. In the women, we see anxiety, insomnia, urinary tract infection. And I would really like to ask, I mean, isn't this supposed to be like a natural a thing that, you know, not everybody in the case of men, but most people most men and all women go through. So why so much discomfort? And is there something that can be done, I mean, to just go through the process without all of this pain and discomfort? Okay, thank you very much. Menopause simply means body change. And um, it's associated with certain hormones in the body system. So at a particular age in men and women, the system starts to go down. The functionality starts to reduce. For women, once the estrogen, once the estrogen gets to a particular age, it starts going down and then the functionality reduces. So you can't just avoid it. Everybody has to go through e aging and we all have to go through the systematic change. So those signs and symptoms, it's a must. There's no cure for menopause and men or for women where it can be managed. Once you know that your system is changing, there's certain things that you need to get, you need to do to manage the signs and symptoms. For women, you change your diet and you do exercises and then go on supplement. But for men, such a percent of men actually go through the signs and symptoms at their early age. But 70% of men don't experience or they don't come down with much of the signs and symptoms, except at the later age, maybe 60, 65 years and above. Okay, Musmola. This um, too can yes. be managed. Okay, okay. Now, um, you know, moving on from, from management, I quickly want to ask, now, menopause in women has several effects, such as, like you said, um, the major one that we know that is, is associated to it is infertility. Um, for andropause, like our, our correspondent said in that report, it doesn't always affect uh, fertility in all men, you know, basically. So what's, what, what exactly is the major thing that men should be worried about or that should be concerned about, if, if I put it that way, when it comes to andropause? Um, it's a 
function of the testosterone mm. and it's natural okay you can't do anything about it but, but besides reduction of testosterone and i'm sure that this is one question that uh, i'm sure i'm speaking for the men folk i'm sure if they are watching me right now they'll pump their fist at this next question is it going to affect sexual performance or does it affect sexual performance in their exercises exercises help to manage and improve testosterone level mm. stress if they remove if they are able to manage stress level this can help to manage it okay and, and how about in women those, those um you know menopause and of course again speaking for the men there's just so much we think we know about women but we do not um does, does menopause also affect um you know um uh, women's uh, sex drive, uh, you know, pleasure. What exactly does what effect does it have on uh, on should I say sex for women, basically? Okay, thank you very much. You see, for testosterone, testosterone is a very very strong hormone. It affects practically every organ in the system. Mm. For women, once the testosterone level goes down very so low, or most of the time by the age of fifty one. The ovaries do not produce test the, the ovaries do not produce estrogen. So the desire, the zeal for sex reduces. And then it starts affecting the vagina. The vagina becomes dry and itchy. And you see, the secretion from the vagina, that part of a woman's body, helps to protect that part of a woman's body. And right now, since the estrogen level goes down, the ability to protect that part of a woman's body is reduced. And then you start seeing women having a lot of secretion. They start having infections in that part of the body. And then you, they have vagina atrophy. That's what is called the itching, inflammation, and the pain. And this is actually linked to the... Um, Uteral, and then that's why most of the time you have those women having pain during urination. So there's, there's the, 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 the vagina actually links to the urethra. So there's a little complications there. All right, thank and you, you see, so much. When women start having all this. Yeah. Oh yeah, just finish up. Okay, I said when a woman start having this complication. The desire for sex is reduced or is not even there at all. Mm. Because then she experiences a lot of discomfort. All right. Okay. Thank you so much for that. Well, um, Dr. Dumebi Okafor, thank you for your patience. I'm just going to. Manage it. Uh, I, I'm not quite sure I got that. What did you say? I said, What's... with education, with education, with education, thus. No, a lot of knowledge, it can be managed. Managed. Okay, thank you so much. And now, Dr. Dumebi Okafo, I'll just throw my last question to you because of our time. Now, we see that uh, the symptoms of menopause include irregular periods, reduced sex drives, and problems with memory and concentration, among others. Is there a particular age range? What is the uh, age bracket to look out for when talking about menopause? Menopause. Right? Yeah, we're talking basically you, for for no, body. Can you hear me? Menopause, right? Yes. For women. Yeah. Yes, please. So I mean, you mentioned that. I think I want to use this point to actually um, bring in something very important, which I was saying I will allude to later. It's important to know or to keep in mind and in, in perspective this difference between the male and female uh, cessation of secondary hormone production. In the woman, it is dramatic. It happens very quickly. There's a decline in estrogen production, and of course, the testosterone production that uh, the ovary does as well, which is mainly responsible for the loss of libido in women, and also uh, versus the one in men. The male one occurs very gradually, so gradually sometimes that we don't even, it's not even noticed, which is why the previous speaker I talked about the huge percentage differences between those who don't seem to get the symptoms and those who do. And so it's important to note that they are not the same. They are the same exactly. The symptoms and the presentations are the same. But the male one is highly muted by the gradual, almost insidious 
decline of testosterone in men. So now the effect of what they get, what the women get, is the result of that significant decline, which occurs anywhere between 45 and 55, like you say, but typically, classically, around 50, 51 years of age. So two years before that, you start getting symptoms. You start getting the symptoms of, uh, before the last minute, I mean, before the final cessation, which you call the climateric. The climateric actually can go up to 10 years. So you start getting changes, symptoms, whether they are mood symptoms, erratic periods, and all that, and hot flashes. And eventually, and during this time, during the climateric, you have this irregularity of periods as the final point is coming on. And eventually, the last message is received, is, uh, is seen, and then it, on from there, it, the symptoms climax, the pitch, the hot flashes, and all the mood issues, and everything that comes with menses, go on for about two years before they start finally declining. So for the woman, you can almost say there is a milestone to it. 51, 50, 51 when it happens. Whereas for the man, it's spread out over over decades. We say starting from about 40, all the way to 60, 70 even, with a gradual decline in testosterone function. And this is why today it's less well known because of its subtleness. Uh, you know, it's almost surreptitious, surreptitious uh, uh, nature in which it appears. All right, Dr. Okafor, thank you so much. Um, I think this is where we should, uh, this should be a good place to leave it. We want to thank you so much, Dr. Okafor, Dr. Dumebi, um, Okafor, who's a, a, a family medicine con family medicine consultant, and of course uh, the uh, associate secretary, uh, sorry, assistant secretary, Association of uh, Community Pharmacists in Lagos State, talking about Musumola Dosumo. Thank you both for joining us on the show. Uh, you have clearly educated us, educated a lot of men. I must, I, I must say, definitely. Um, Dr. Kafo, maybe I'll see you in, in, in private to ask you how much time I have left. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Okafo. Thank you so much, Musumola. Bernard, is that fear I sense in your voice? I mean, I, I could see how Oh, no, it's not fear. Like, do, Dr. Okafo and, and Musumola have clearly stated them, there's nothing to be afraid of. It's, it's going to spread across well, a, period, a period of time. But really, like mm -hmm. the guy who was also interviewed, he said, I didn't see this coming. And I'm sure I so many men. I was so excited. So I many apologize. men did not see this coming. But again, there is no, you know, there, there's no amount, there's no price to put on information and enlightenment. Mm -hmm. and, and this is the reason that we have Report Desk Africa to bring you topics like these that you can always hold on to. Definitely. Very insightful segment, I must say. I mean, I learned a lot. A lot of us knew about menopause, but not a lot of us knew about, um, you know... Andropos. Andropos. Mm -hmm. And looking at the reaction of this gentleman beside me was just everything I needed for the day. <laughs> All right, so uh, we will be right back to talk about our second topic, and you don't want to miss that. We'll go on a short break now. Do stay with us. New Central TV, Africa's number one storyteller, has come with the best of both worlds. With a combination of news app and live TV, we ensure that you keep track of the latest headlines, breaking news, and in-depth analysis from professional journalists from around the continent. Download the New Central TV app on Android and iOS and get started today. Don't forget to follow us on New Central's social media platforms. New Central. Africa first. You're still watching Report Desk Africa. If you're just joining us, you've missed the first half of the show where we basically talked about menopause and repose, their differences and the effects they have on the human body. And now I'll be talking about a topic that has generated mixed reactions for over two weeks now or more from Nigerians uh, looking at the Western, uh, West Africa part of the continent. Now, Central Bank of Nigeria, the CBN, has limited weekly cash withdrawals over the counter to 100,000 naira for individuals and 500,000 naira for organizations, regardless of their size. The CBN also mentioned that all deposit money banks and their financial institutions, including payment service banks, primary mortgage banks, and microfinance banks, now have limits on how much cash individuals and companies in Nigeria can withdraw over the counter and via the point of sales, what they call the POS machines, as well as the ATMs. The directive comes as the CBN prepares to release the redesigned 200 naira, 500 naira, and 1,000 naira notes into circulation.
from next week. And like I said, there's been a lot of reactions as to the redesigning of the currency, but we're not going to talk about that. Now, the directive mentioned in the memo will take effect from January 9, 2023. Our correspondent, Adeshewa Udushoga, gives us more insights into this topic. We'll go to look at the report now and we'll talk about it on the back end. Do take a look. There is a lot going on in the Nigerian monetary policy system as central bank actively adjusts and readjusts its policies. That 85% of currency in circulation, which is 2.73 trillion naira, out of 3.23 trillion naira was outside the banking system, does not seem to sit well with the Apex Bank, thus taking swift actions. One of its recent actions to take back control of cash was the redesign of some new Naira note, and now the most recent is the revision of cash withdrawal limit. While the policy may be directed at some certain monetary policy control, analysts say efforts towards financial inclusion is now at the mercy of the new policy. We have quite a number of uh, economic players, SMEs as well, micro enterprises that are in rural areas, remote locations where you don't have banks. There are sometimes you don't even have networks. These people are Nigerians. So we need to have an inclusive approach to the policy process. This agency banking has grown astronomically in the last one to three years. Millions of jobs have been created. So if we impose this kind of policy on them, it's going to cripple their business. And to achieve what? Once Nigerians begin to get a hang over this new um, reality, there will be an increased cash stack on the economy. Because um, I don't think any Nigerian in the real senses will want to um, be in a position where they probably do not have enough cash to cash run their them. engagements. Yes. Let's not forget that it's a 60% driven um, informal economy. The policy indicated that over-the-counter cash withdrawals by individuals and corporate entities should not exceed 100,000 naira and 500,000 naira respectively per week. A street survey is indicating a mixed reaction. Does it mean this money that we're going to get the 20,000 naira per day? Some of us are having families of more than 10. Can that be enough to spend? It will make the government and the CBA to control Cash, uh, cash. The volume of cash in the circulation is more. There are other indications that this new policy may be directed at curbing the financing of insecurities. How effective is this? Let the security agencies deal with issues of criminality. That is their job. That is, these are institutions of state. And in any case, in the banking system, there are protocols as to the limit of withdrawal that has to be reported to the Financial Intelligence Unit. As part of the new policy, the bank also said the maximum cash withdrawal per week via ATM should be 100,000 naira, subject to a maximum of 20,000 naira cash withdrawal per day, and the only denominations of 200 naira and below shall be loaded into the ATMs, effective January 9, 2023. Adesha Waldushoga, reporting for News Central. Clearly, this is the case of people having more questions than answers. And Blessings right here has already asked me one of such questions. Now, joining us uh, to dissect this particular topic is New Central's business desk editor, none other than Nasir Agbalaya. Nasir, thank you for joining us this evening. Hi, Nasir, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, thank you so much for joining us. Now, Nas, we're putting you in the hot seat here. You are going to have to educate many of us and to help some of us make sense of it all. Now, the announcement of the limits for cash withdrawals comes just weeks after the redesign of, like Blessings mentioned earlier, of the 200, 500, and 1,000, um, you know, 1,000 Naira notes, uh, which was recently announced. Now, one of the main reasons given for that uh, was to help control currency in circulation and probably tighten money supply to address the issues of rising inflation, which has hit a 17-year high. Um, with that, that was from September 2022, by the way. So where does this uh, particular, this new conversation fit in now? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Nasir. Great. Now, uh, the CBN is not wrong in its actions. But uh, the cash limits would truly affect uh, small business holders, uh, the small, medium, microfinance, because uh, a good number of them are in the informal sector and they deal with cash primarily.
Um, the trust deficit uh, in Nigeria, which uh, most of us are aware of, and there are many people who do not yet bank. Um, that means that uh, financial inclusion has not truly catch on. Now, um, earlier today, uh, one of our colleagues was talking to me about somebody who brought uh, 5 million Naira cash into uh, Cardinal Central Market. Imagine, 5 million Naira cash. Hmm. Now, that money is part of what uh, led to this, uh, which has not been banked. Now, the CBN is not wrong in trying to restrict the free flow of money to an extent, mind my, my words, to an extent, because this uh, uh, gives rise to inflation. So, yeah, that is right, that uh, they need to mop up cash, but also to ensure that uh, there is much um, liquidity in the market means that the economy is viable. People need to buy and sell, particularly uh, in a period like this, uh, December period, where many people will be on uh, holiday, people outside the country will bring in cash. So uh, it, it's a bit funny which uh, uh, that this is happening right now, like this time, like I mentioned. Many uh, people will come from diaspora. That diaspora remittance has been known to support literally every economy. So is the central bank now saying that after that? Mind you, let's not forget that central bank also has a policy where with each dollar uh, you bring into uh, Nigerian banks, they pay you back again five naira. That is still there. So it's like uh, doing putting one policy to make sure that uh, there is progress in the economy, and then have another policy that sort of counteract that. That's exactly what this is. All right, uh, Nasiru, thank you very much for that. Now let's look at the government uh, revenue, like you mentioned. I would like for us to peek on that. Nigerians have shared divergent opinions since the policy was made public, and one major view is that the new policy will boost the federal government revenue as Nigeria is currently in a debt crisis that everyone obviously knows, and its main source of revenue, which is oil, is no longer reliable. How true is that? Uh, to an extent, that is true. Um, the banks, in conjunction with telecos, are making sure that mobile money uh, services are happening. Now, we, understand, we do know that uh, a few months ago, there was a literal breakdown of uh, services where the, the, the telcos complained that banks were not remitting their share of this. So an agreement was reached between uh, these two parties. The central bank was part of that agreement to ensure that uh, more, they, uh, they, uh, every party still get their money. But unfortunately, that also led to more charges for Nigerians. Now, with this, the charges will continue. Nigerians will still have to pay for all these transactions. Now, they want to ensure that more money is moved online. Not so bad. But unfortunately, nothing, there's no discussion about reducing the service charges. Now, I remember in, 20, in 2008, during the global market crash, now most economies uh, brought down not, not just their interest rates, but ensure that uh, there's more money for businesses. That didn't happen in Nigeria. Likewise, uh, during the COVID-19 lockdown, many uh, tax rebates occurred across the world. Nigerians, some states actually did it, but the federal government still uh, didn't catch on to that. So. In, in, uh, in, in a nutshell, Nigeria needs to encourage businesses to thrive. The policies are mostly uh, marked to help uh, establish uh, uh, sectors like the banking and insurance sector. But the everyday Nigerians need to be assisted to ensure that they stay in business. But they actually employ more people than this, uh, the, the blue collar and white collar services. Okay, Nas, I'll, I'll quickly like to put a pause to your com to this conversation here, and I'm joining uh, joining us rather is Bettina Unweli, one of our correspondents, who's going to tell us what exactly is going on on social media. You can definitely tell that a lot of Nigerians, particularly those who make use of cash on a daily basis, are not particularly happy. Bettina, thank you for joining us. Could you quickly tell us what's going on on social media? Thank you so much, Bernard. The social media has been running amok since the new central bank policy came out, and well, with good reason, if I must say. But on social media right now, we have the first ladyship, and she says, with the new CBN cashless policy, please do not get kidnapped in Nigeria. You won't be able to have access to large cash unless you are a politician with access, and the cashless policy is good in curbing vote buying, but it is going to kill a lot of ATM vendorship and micro businesses. That is not wrong at all. We have another person here saying people criticizing this CBN policy as if it was drafted by only one person. 
because you have degrees in economics doesn't mean that you know better. The Monetary Policy Committee comprises of so many prominent and competent people, it is not rocket science. Uh, I think we can take one more before we call it a day on this uh, social media. Now we have any boy saying, so it's a Saturday and I urgently need to repair my car. I tried to transfer 60,000 Naira to my mechanic, but the app is down as usual. I approached the ATM, but CBN says my daily limit is 20,000 Naira. POS withdrawal limit is also 20,000 Naira. What alternative do I have going right now by the new CBN policy? And I think, Bernard, that is a lot of concern for a lot of people out there saying, okay, so what happens when um, the transfers and all of the things that we do online digitally do not work and we don't have cash? A lot of people are going to be caught in a tight corner and they need an alternative as to how to handle that. Mm, Bettina, there's a song by popular Nigerian singer Omaumi. Um, says, if you ask me, uh, my voice is not very good. I would have loved to sing that song. Maybe that Please would answer do not the question. Sing. Please don't. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Bettina. Now, naturally, if you're still there, I'll call you straight back to you. We don't have so much time. But now, with the new CBN cash policy, it's expected that the number of electronic transactions, just as Bettina has pointed out in some of the questions, will eventually skyrocket. And this could mean more money to the government. Um, and then, what now happens to SMEs? And of course, pockets of POS operators. Now, we do know that these are the ones who help, um, you know, the small and medium scale enterprises who deal more in cash than bank transfers. Does this mean that this particular line of business is going to die? What happens to them? Oh, wow, it's, it's a very sad situation. Mm. Now, before I talk about that, let's not forget that most of these people who are, they are, they are in the informal sector. Yes, they may, a few would survive. But that will be those who have multiple sources of revenue. That, that is just not their only source. But for those who rely on this, on the few uh, they, they make on it, it's quite sad. I do not see um, if this uh, policy is not reversed, then this limit is not uh, increased. I don't see them being in business by the second quarter of next year. It's really sad. And many people have used this as a means of earning their daily uh, living. Now, very interestingly, uh, a partner in PwC once mentioned that Nigeria needs to create more wealth, something uh, akin to what happened uh, in the 50s and uh, early 60s, where uh, in the southwest of Nigeria particularly, where cocoa farmers were enriched, and as they had more wealth, they were able to pay more tax. That is a policy which uh, Nigeria should look at, ensuring that infrastructures are working to support uh, uh, both formal and informal sector, that creates wealth. With wealth, people will be willing to pay their taxes, which is, I believe, one of the main goals of this uh, new policy. Okay, uh, Nasir, let's look at an update to this story. Now, we know that the House of Representatives has asked the Central Bank of Nigeria to host the implementation of the new cash withdrawal policy that is slated for January 9, 2023. Because let's face it, every uh, common man is complaining right now. We, we do not exactly run a very effective cashless policy yet in this country. So pending compliance with the provisions of the Act establishing the bank, what exactly is your thought about this? Um, first, uh, it was widely reported online that that order has been made, but there's really no confirmation. The only confirmation that I'm aware of is that the central bank, the central bank governor, Gordon Imifili, has been summoned by the lawmakers to appear next week, I believe by a week ago from now. So when he appears, he needs to justify to the lawmaker because rightly he should have met lawmakers. I mean, due process is a table that this is going to happen. But also, and it is also possible that if an emergency action is required, the president can veto such action, which is what happened in this case. But it is very good that uh, the lawmakers are doing their due diligence by calling him to explain why both the redesign of the Naira note is happening and also why the cash limit has, uh, is what uh, he is implementing now. So uh, let's see what happens after that sitting. Also, if he will actually present himself to the lawmakers next week. Because uh, in this government, many things have happened. Many things truly have, ha truly have happened. Many more things will happen. Thank you once again, Nasir Agbalaya, this creditor of business desk here at News Central. Be sure, Nas, that we will come back to you for more questions should we not get clarity on this. But thank you so much once again. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much, guys.
All right. Now, very quickly, um, blessings. There are so many questions to be asked here. I have people already who have been sending me messages to ask if this is true and how this will affect the common man. Again, like the last question we had on social media that Bettina put out, we know how, um, you know, how, sorry to say, but erratic and maybe epileptic um, the online banking system could be in Nigeria. In the case where a person is stuck and you clearly need to get cash, these are one of the questions, the many questions that people are asking. This it is, um, I don't seem to understand, and I'm sure many people too do not understand how this topic came in place, first of all. And how the whole system is even supposed to function mm. effectively. Like I said, we do not exactly have a functioning cashless policy mm -hmm. in this country, in Africa, yet. And you see the common man struggling to, you know, go about with cash and, and do things with money. And now you, you're saying that our daily limit is 20,000 era, which, I mean, looking at the economy, is not even, it doesn't suffice mm -hmm. for an ordinary man. And then one of the comments on social media that really made sense to me was someone saying that they hope that, um, you know, the, the ordinary man can have enough access to cash like the politicians will, because... Everybody already feels like there are certain people who are above the law. Mm. And we hope that that is not the case in, yeah, in, in yeah. this situation. Mm. Because now you're saying that the reason you're doing this is to curb excess cash. But let's let's be honest. If we do not take things the, the way they should be, we'll still see a lot of politicians with excess cash. So does it apply to everybody? Should it apply to everybody? Should this even come, come I, into I, I existence in, in, mm. in the first place? So these are a lot of questions that should be asked. And mm. let, let's see how it goes. Again, we said uh, earlier more questions than answers. But then we... The, well, thankfully, some would have said, um, the, the, you know, the lawmakers have jumped into this particular conversation. We'll take a final break for the show. And when we come back, we'll be looking into our crystal ball to see what topics we'll be looking at possibly into next week. And, of course, Bettina Unwele is standing by. Do stay with us. three different topics inside our crystal screen and not the crystal ball. Now, Ebola vaccines arrive in Uganda for trials and the Uganda Health Minister will receive uh, a new consignment. Uganda has not registered any new positive Ebola case over the, over, in over three weeks, indicating that the outbreak might be under control. Now from Uganda, we move on into another country, South Sudan. In South Sudan, at least 20,000 people have fled the crisis since it, it erupted in August, including 3,000 who crossed the border into Sudan. Now armed clashes in Sudan have forced thousands of civilians into running and hiding themselves for safety. And finally, we'll end in Rwanda where the uh, National Electoral Commission has submitted the final list of 24 candidates who are vying to represent Rwanda in the East African Legislative Assembly. That is something very interesting that we're going to be looking at. And of course, we hope you at home too will be looking at it along with us. Right, thank you so much, Bettina. Just before you go, um, or before we go, um, uh, Bettina, I, first, first of all, very interesting for me and, and uh, a good one that Ebola is kind of, like, well, kind of being under control now in Uganda. In Uganda, like yeah, thing. that's great news. That, that, it is great that's news great that we've we'll been looking at, and thank God for the vaccine. But just before you go, Bettina, I want to ask you, on the average, how much cash do you hold at home? I, I actually don't hold cash. I think the highest cash I've held in the last one year at home will be between 20,000, 10 to 20,000 naira. If I I'm should being visit honest. You, I should visit you at home, Bettina. <laughs> anyway, oh. thank you so much for joining us on this segment. Thank you, too. Um, Have an amazing week. <laughs> don't ask me. Don't ask me. I need cash a lot. I use cash a lot. <laughs> I'm right. sure every average Nigerian does. I uh, you know that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, those who have been watching us from uh, whether from your screens at home or from your offices or from your phones, wherever you've been watching us from, thank you so much. And we also like to say thank you to everyone who's been a part of this show. Do join us again same time next week, same station, New Central Television. My name, of course, is Bernard Akede. And my name is Blessings Masugu. Have a lovely week.